When we think of philosophers, we generally imagine someone who writes long, complicated passages within the depths of their study. Maybe we even imagine the classy existentialist talking futility over a cup of coffee in the Saint Germain. And then there's Diogenes, a homeless man who urinated on people, lived with dogs, and masturbated in public that we still talk about to this day. To put it simply, this guy cared little for the opinions of others. In the greatest of accounts, Diogenes would roast the philosophers and the rulers of his age, only to leave them dumbfounded by his unassuming wit. Where do we even begin with this man? Especially when he has no authored written material preserved, and thus we must rely on secondhand written accounts of his absurd life. Since the events of his life are so blurry, let's lay out his philosophy, which is more of a doing than written system involving acting out what you believe in, more so than other philosophies. Many consider Diogenes to be the founder of cynicism, an ideology that is so unconventional. Many scholars find it difficult to call it a school of philosophy. Cynics believe, as do the Stoics, that they have found the shortcut to virtue through their certain lifestyle, although they also address that this shortcut is actually really, really hard to attempt. We can see this difficulty in living your life as a cynic, as its very name suggests a dog-like existence. The word cynic in Greek is komikos, which also means dog-like. This naming either came from one of the first of the cynic's nicknames being similar to the word dog, or from Diogenes, who would shamelessly perform his private acts in public, and was later deemed Diogenes the dog. There is specifically one account in which, when seen living amongst the dogs and appearing just as dirty as them, he was called a dog by passerbys. Not being one to contest such a statement as being a dog and his philosophy is quite virtuous, he embraced the name by urinating on the name callers, as a dog would. To not get sidetracked, the ethics of this philosophy are really quite simple, live in accord with nature. Cynics see society as overcomplicating everything and instead embrace existence in nature as a dog would. Diogenes is quoted as saying, humans have complicated every simple gift of the gods. In this statement, we see that for Diogenes, his morality means returning to the simplicity of the natural world. Okay now, let's get to his life. Diogenes may have originally helped his father, a banker in Sinope, due to archaeological findings that have unearthed defaced currency in and around where his family operated, as well as his fleeing of the town, many believe the cynic was exiled for attempting to devalue the currency. The Greeks and Persians had Sinope divided at the time, so their actions may have been political. According to texts, Diogenes was told to deface the currency by the oracle at Delphi, and after first taking that to mean literally deface it, later believed that the message was to deface or challenge the currency, the currency being social customs. This is where he went to Athens. It is said that when he came to Athens, he had a slave named Manes. Diogenes said, if Manes can live without Diogenes, why not Diogenes without Manes? And let him go, his first act of self-sufficiency. He was then attracted to the teachings of Antisthenes, although he was beaten by his hero with a stick after being a little too obsessed. Antisthenes is, according to Diogenes, the first cynic. It was also time for Diogenes to find some nice real estate. Diogenes lived in a clay wine jar on the street, his only possession a wooden bowl. When he saw a boy cup his hands and drink water, Diogenes threw away his wooden bowl, realizing how materialistic he had become. Then Diogenes heard about this shitbag Plato. Plato claimed that he could simply define man by stating one that is bipedal and featherless. Diogenes promptly plucked a chicken and stated, Behold, Plato's man. This led to Plato revising his definition to include the term broad-nailed. Throughout his storied career in Athens, Diogenes became the talk of the town, wandering the street in broad daylight with a lamp, claiming that he was seeking good men, but only found vile and brutish creatures, eating at a marketplace, a custom that was very looked down upon at the time, simply because he was hungry, living with dogs, and, of course, masturbating on the street. The last one, when he was tried before a court for it, led him to defend his act by stating, if only it was so easy to end my hunger by rubbing my belly. Despite all this, he was quite well loved in Athens for his naked and pervy shenanigans, acting as a designated crazy uncle to the strict and serious Athenian populace. Then, one 
night, he was taken by pirates and sold as a slave in Crete. When asked by his owner what his previous occupation was, Diogenes, instead of freaking out, told him that he governed men. He either said this because he generally saw himself as a king in Athens, or because the phrase govern men and teach men were quite similar and this was a dad joke level pun. His owner loved this and hired him as a tutor to his kids in Corinth. Even then, he didn't stop. Upon hearing that an army was approaching Corinth, he witnessed the citizens of his village running and screaming in a frenzy. Not wanting to be left out of the fun, he began rolling his clay wine jar up and down a hill. When asked why, he stated that he was just being as useful as the citizens. This act simultaneously represented the futility of freaking out over things that one has little control over, a very stoic and Sisyphean concept, and that he was offering a solution that the citizens will have to move their homes to avoid conflict. Now we come to the more famous and well-known of Diogenes' incidents with others. During his stay in Corinth, Alexander the Great was said to have been passing by, hearing of the strange qualities of our beloved philosopher, Alexander met Diogenes and asked him if there was anything he could do for him. When confronted by such an opportunity, a man of vast wealth and power, and arguably the most popular figure of that time period, Diogenes stated, Yes, get out of my sunlight. To this, Alexander replied in admiration, If I were not Alexander, I would wish to be Diogenes. Diogenes, indifferent to the remark, retorted, If I were not Diogenes, I would also wish to be Diogenes. There is another far more savage account of this meeting. When Alexander spotted Diogenes searching through a pile of bones and asked why he would do such a thing, Diogenes stated that I was searching for the bones of your father but could not distinguish them from the bones of slaves. Diogenes may have lived out the rest of his life tutoring, or he may have spent it on the streets of Corinth. Even his death is kind of ambiguous, certain accounts establish that Diogenes simply held his breath and died, some believe he became sick from eating raw octopus or suffering infection from a dog bite. Whatever finally took Diogenes may never be known. When asked about what he would like to happen to his body upon his death, he asked to be thrown over the walls of Corinth with a stick so he could battle the wild animals trying to eat him. When asked why he would need a stick as he will be unaware of anything, he said, If I lack awareness, why should I care what happens to me when I am dead? We see that even as he faces his mortality, Diogenes continued to push the customs of his period, a consistent advocate of simplicity as the highest virtue. Now, despite the admirable and historical fame of Diogenes, it should be not necessarily suggested to seek out this life. In modern times, Diogenes Syndrome is a medical term used to describe people that are shameless, apathetic, socially withdrawn, and hold extreme self-neglect. This is a slight misnomer, as the self-neglect of Diogenes was, if anything, an act of high self-esteem, just in his own way. If he was around today, he may even state that the aforementioned syndrome is another product of social construct, or he would be institutionalized.